QuickBooks Online 2023 Receipts Set Up Forward Email Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switching the view down below. Duplicating some tabs to put some reports in. Let's go to the tab up top to do so. That is duplicate it. And then right click on the tab that has been duplicated to duplicate again. Back to the tab to the middle as the one to the right is thinking. Reports on the left hand side. We want to open the balance sheet as it is thinking let's tab to the right reports on the left and this time we want of course the p and the l the profit and loss the income statement closing the hamburger up top and change that range 010124 tab 123124 tab january to december 2024 we're going to run it tab into the middle close in the hamburger we want that range to be the same from 010124 tab 123124 tab running it to refresh it and let's tab to the left now we've been focusing in on the receipts tracking our receipts so in the accountant view that's under the banking and then we're on the receipts on the right hand side so we talked about basically once the receipts are in the system what we can do with the receipts how we can basically track the receipts now there's a couple ways we might get the receipts into the system so of course we have our options up top we've we've looked at the option of uploading them from the computer uh we can all we can often you know take a picture of it or snap it on our phone possibly get it on our computer and then upload it from there we got the application which we can also use to to get the information into the system the phone acting in essence like a scanner to give us that nice pdf format oftentimes so we can populate that into the system and quickbooks is more likely to be able to read it we might have it on our google drive we might have a system where we have it on our google drive and then we might have the manage forward email kind of set up here now this you would expect that if you were the manager and you were doing your your own receipts that you you might have the app to to basically take pictures of the receipts if you want others to be giving you uh, receipts then you have to have some way for them to populate or give you the receipts obviously you can have them email the receipts to you put them on your computer or your google drive and then upload them from there but if you'd like to obviously cut out that middle step and just have them going directly from the email that whoever is sending, possibly uh, employees, possibly contractors, for example, directly into this space so that then you can manage it, then we might be able to use this uh, manage forward email option here. Now note what will basically happen is if we get this set up properly, they're gonna send this to the forwarding email and this forwarding email isn't one that you're going to basically go open up and check and look at all the time, right? Because the point of it is to forward. It's just the passing point to get it from there into your, your system here. So the receipts should automatically come into uh, this system with the use of your contractor or employee sending them to this forwarding email. Once they're in here, they're not actually added to the financial statements as we saw in prior presentations, which is kind of good because we don't want to get forwarding emails that are automatically going to affect our financials generally. We're going to have them come in here and then we're going to do whatever we're going to do to them that we talked about in prior presentations. So how can we set up this forward email? I'm first going to look at this in uh, a the Craig's design and landscaping because I haven't 
set up anybody in this one yet. So this one's a clean copy. So if I go to the banking section and I go to the receipts and we go to the forward email, it will look like this if we haven't set one up before yet. So it says, let's uh, create your forwarding email, send receipts and bill to an email uh, just for Craig's design. So here's your enter your email. So notice what it has here. It's got some characters at the uh, qbodocs.com, uh, right? Qbodocs. Okay, that makes sense. Qbodocs.com. And so this, is, again, this isn't your actual email address, obviously. You're not putting... And that could be a little confusing because when you first set this up, you might be thinking, well, does this need to be in my actual email address that I'm going to look up? Am I going to set up another email address and go look at it on Google email or whatever or something like that? No, this is an email address through QuickBooks that you're not using to open your emails, but rather using it simply as a forwarding tool to get that information from someone else's email into your uh, QuickBooks account. So you can pick something here. You have to pick something that hasn't been chosen before uh, by somebody else. So you want something memorable that you can give to people that are trying to forward your receipts, whoever that is, employees, contractors, and that has someone else has not yet taken. And over here, we have a copy of, we've set ours up already. So if I go into this one, I just set up Tesco one, two, three. Now I couldn't set up just Tesco because somebody had used Tesco, right? So I put Tesco one, two, three, and then at this email address. So now we can say, okay, employ employees or whoever we want to be giving us information. What we would like you to do is get the receipts and then email them uh, into this email, which should then pull them into this screen so we can do whatever we need to do them with them, either help to populate our financial statements with them or possibly make a reimbursement type of thing based on those receipts. Now, when they send the receipts, uh, ideally, you would think that we would want those receipts to be on separate uh, separate screenshots. So you can have multiple attachments on the email, but you would like to have one receipt per picture, I think would be the general rule. And generally, you would think that the PDF format would be the best format for the thing to read. In other words, if you take a picture on your phone, it might be like a JPEG or something like that as the type of file. And maybe QuickBooks can read that one, but you would rather have, you would think, a PDF file, which is more likely for, their, for it to be able to read it nicely. Now, even if they don't have the QuickBooks integration app, they should have, you can get apps to, to take a picture with your phone as a PDF instead of a JPEG. And so it's like a scanner app. You can have a scanner app. So if your employee has a scanner, has a phone, they could probably get a scanner app. They could take a picture of, of the receipt and then email it as not a P, not a JPEG, but a PDF file would be the general idea. Now, the, the kind of quirk here that we have to deal with is that you have to set up this person as someone, as a user within QuickBooks, which is kind of kind of like uh, not ideal because you might want it from your contractors, for example, uh, or your employees, but they have to be basically uh, a user. So the way you set up the users is uh, you, you, you could actually go in here and add a user down here. And that takes you to this screen, which is, which is actually, you can also get there by going to the cog up top and then going to the uh, manage users, same, same thing. So now we've got our users. So we, we of course have the admin of the account and then we have uh, our other users that we can add. So they have to be somewhere in here as a user. So if you wanted to add a user, you can say add user and then you have your options of standard user, company admin, reports only. I don't believe if you try to put them in here as reports only so they can just view the reports that they will have the capacity then to use the forward email function. Obviously, I believe the admin would work. And your other option is the standard user if you want to give them limited options. So I'm going to go there and then hit next. And then within here, how much access do you want this user to have? All, payroll, none, limited. 
You can experiment with these options. However, I believe if you select none, then you may not have the capacity for them to be able to send you the emails with the forward email. So you kind of have to play with these if you want to give them limited uh, capacities to see what's the, the smallest amounts you can give them while still allowing them to have that forward email capacity. So in other words, if I close this out and I go into my uh, hamburger and then I'm going to go down to the banking and in the forward email, they should show up down here once you have added them. So you can play with those settings. If they, sh if they don't show up down here, then possibly you don't have the settings high enough for them to be showing up for whatever reasons, QuickBooks, whatever threshold they put on the settings. And so you might have to level up to the settings so that they show up here. Once they do show up here, then you'll be able to toggle this on where it says up top, manage receipts, senders, select who can forward receipts and bills, only register users can send documents. So once that's set up, then you can give them your forward email address, which I'm gonna say is this item. I'm gonna copy it here and we'll test out an email. And so that's, and so let's open up a receipts thing. These are the receipts we made before and I'll just make a couple new receipts. I'll just say they're at the end of the year, like November and let's say November. I'm gonna add two, two receipts, but I want to add them as separate receipts. This is how you might wanna ask your employee or your contractor to give you the receipts in an email, have them have separate receipts, hopefully in a PDF format. So they might take a picture of it, but you want them to use that scanner app. And I'm gonna say, this is going to be receipts. Let's make it uh, 12. And then I'm going to say this is a PDF file. I'm just gonna save it as a PDF for example purposes. Receipts 12. Let's do the same thing to the second one. Ultra base file, save as, browse, and receipts 12 or 13 this time. It's gonna save it as a PDF, PDF, por favor. And so there it is. And so now I'm gonna open up an email. We are now imagining ourselves to be the contractor with our email address and we're gonna send it to that testco 123 qbodocscom And I'm gonna make an attachment. Attachy, we need an attachy. An attachy helicopter. We'll open that and there we go. And we'll just name it receipts, receipts, and then we will send it out. Back to QuickBooks on the administrator side of thing. I, I, I could see things thinking here. I refreshed the screen just to make sure that it's it's picking up, but you may not need to do that. And you can see they're, they're pulling in. So we're getting info from documents. So notice what's happening here that that email that it, we're sending to, I'm not actually going into the email. So I don't have to go into the email and then s s sort through all the spam and the garbage in order to get the receipts and then upload them in here. It's just a forwarding email. I'm not even gonna look at it, thank goodness. And then it's just gonna forward that stuff uh, into, into here for us. And then here is our receipt. Once here, like we've seen in prior presentations, it has not yet been added to the financial statements at this point in time. It's in basically bank receipts limbo. It has not yet been pulled into the promised land as the creation of, of our financial statements or an attachment to an expense form or something. So that's what we do here. So now we can go into the managing of it, just like we have seen in prior presentation. So pretty neat system. If you if you want other people sending you receipts, possibly because you're reimbursing them or something like that, then you can use that forward email, but you have to set them up as a user in order to pull that information into the receipts limbo field and then do whatever you're going to do with it from that point.